talk about super dope. My name is super, super dope. My name is Kyle. Thank you for checking this out. With me today is Murder Jimmy. Jimmy, how are you doing? I'm good. Friday night, two men. Uh, I'm 30. You're approaching 30, and we are sitting here talking about a Japanese comic book that just got released yesterday. Nice. Dragon Ball Super manga chapter 54. Sun Gohan versus 73. Yeah, 73. 73. I don't think it's really 73, though. I think it's just 73. Which I guess 73 is a cool thing to call him. It's better than 73. Is he seven foot three? I feel like he looks like he's seven foot three, but I don't know that he actually is. But that's like his uh, his number. I don't think he's an like android. On an android list? Yeah, like if he was an android, like I don't know what he is. is but android seven three? Yeah. He's his model seven three. We're doing a really poor job. I'll talk about this manga right out the gate. <laughs> but it's okay, because I took uh, not so meticulous notes that we will now work through. Uh, working through some of the general uh, plot beats here. I uh, hope you're ready. So at the end of the last chapter, Piccolo was getting his ass whipped. And uh, Go- Son Gohan just showed up to save the day. And we got the cliffhanger of, oh, wow, Gohan. Even though he... Um, it's, been a, it's been a couple of... Um, at least one memorable Gohan slide. I think we talked about it a couple of uh, manga chapters back. Um, whenever that was, probably a couple months ago now. Um, they ask where Goku's kid is. They don't even refer to him by name. I think Jocko was like, where's, where's Goku's kid at? He's pretty strong. <laughs> and uh, and what about Baldi? The Baldies, meaning Krillin and Tien. And Bulma just totally sidesteps Goku's kid part of the question. And it's like, oh yeah, Tien, he doesn't have a cell phone. Krillin, we'll give him a call. He's probably not up to anything. It's not a big deal. And uh, I'm like, oh, wow. All right, they're not even going to acknowledge Gohan as an option for this thing. And then they give him the, uh, you know, he's at like a college conference thing or whatever, being a scholar. So I firmly thought that Gohan was going to be. Friggin' nerd. Yeah, just out there being a nerd, <laughs> wearing a nice sweater, his puke yellow glasses, uh, looking sharp, you know. He, uh, I thought he was firmly out of the picture for this for this chapter. And uh, nope, he shows up at the end of last chapter in 53 to save the day, saves Piccolo from getting killed. And, uh. The way this chapter starts today, we are off to the races immediately. The first panel of it, like the opening panel on the first page, is just him like clotheslining seven three across this fucking valley that they're in, circumventing a lot of the typical Dragon Ball shit of him just like standing around and being like, "Where are you from? Why yeah. are you evil?" We, we, don't need, we don't need to really go through that at this point. We we already know. We already know that this dude is fucking evil, all right, and that he just almost killed Piccolo. So Gohan doesn't need to go through any of those typical motions. He's just right into fighting mode. And in all seriousness, guys, this is probably going to be kind of a short episode today because this is such an action-heavy chapter, and a lot of it has to do with this cool fight with 7-3. So there's a couple things to take away from it. Um, One, Gohan is uh, super not fucking around. He's very powerful. Uh, which is good to see. Um, he hasn't reverted back to some kind of um, stupid nerd form, uh, even though he just came from a college conference. He just show up in like his um, whatever his scholar attire with his sweater vest and shit. But Piccolo uses the clothes beam on him. What clothes? Beam? I swear to God, dude, he uses the. It's like not quite a beam, but. He just like poofs him some new clothes and it's a piccolo gi like he had in the Sherman <laughs> Power manga. So I'm glad they're still going with the piccolo gi. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, he poofs him some new clothes, clothes beam style. So that was really cool to see. He's fighting 7 3. 7 3, obviously, last chapter absorbed the powers of Piccolo and we know that he's got the ability to use those powers for 30 minutes. Okay. That's how we're to understand his powers at this point. Uh, he can absorb somebody's powers if he grabs them by the throat. He can use that person's powers for 30 minutes. Uh, he becomes as strong as that person, or he, he, but he's already pretty strong. So, like, he absorbs that person's powers. He's already pretty strong on top of it, so it just amplifies his own powers. It's it's, it's, it's a buff, basically. His own yeah. power is a buff to the power that he naturally absorbs. Yeah. So he's absorbed somebody strong like Piccolo. He's got this own natural buff. Now he can use Piccolo's powers. So Gohan ha- essentially has to fight a copy version of Piccolo. Bad fucking news for you, 7-3. Yeah. And, and why is that? Because fucking... Who else knows Piccolo but Gohan, dude? Not like nobody knows him that well. Yeah, like Piccolo's been fighting Gohan since Gohan exactly. was four years old. Right. So, fighting Piccolo is second nature to him. 
Um, I don't think Piccolo takes super kindly to the fact that uh, Gohan can so efficiently whip his ass. <laughs> but uh, we see him use some more of the typical Piccolo powers. Um, what I do like, though, is that I think... Hell's own grenade. He uses the hell's own grenade piece of it, and Gohan knows exactly how to navigate himself out of yeah, that. Yeah, right. Um, but no, the the, the Super Namekian, the, the giant Namekian status. If you've listened to the show for a while, you know that I've opined on it regularly. I am such a big fan of Dragon Ball Z movie 13. Uh, fucking whatever it is. Furious Explosion, Wrath of the Dragon Fist is the amalgamation of the two titles that I just massacred super badly between Japanese and English into one. Um, I love the idea of fighting a big monster in Dragon Ball Z world because it's not explored... Super often, it's touched on at various points throughout the series. I love Harutagarn and, and Tapion, moreover, as as a character. So, uh, my point is, I love anytime a big fucking monster, Godzilla sized motherfucker, comes into Dragon Ball, and just the um, having to adapt the mechanics of the fighting to be able to fight something. And there's some really, really cool sequences in Gohan versus. Uh, you know, Super 7-3, we'll call him, you know, Giant 7-3. Um, one of which is he does this really cool takedown where he fucking Tanya hardens him out at the back of the knees with a double key blast and takes him down to his knees real quick. Um, and then he does, uh, he meaning 7-3, does this long stretch arm attack again to try to get Gohan and he fucking navigates him through all these rocks and shit and eventually turns it around on him and runs up his arms and does this massive comedy on my heart goes to blast him right in the motherfucking face using the stretch arms is cool I like that we're still relying on you know a different character using these Namekian abilities um, the comedy on my heart is super reminiscent of a couple of things we saw in the tournament of power uh, one of which I think is uh, obviously the direct comparison is the comedy on my heart that Goku does against Kefla where he just dodges back and forth across those little medias and then blasts away the goddamn face. Triple T. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> was so fucking badass. Yeah. Uh, but I think the less obvious comparison would be um, 18 versus Super Ribrianne, I believe, when she gets all jacked up and she has to fucking punch a hole through a big glass head. I forget what episode it is. I think it's like around 118 or something, 119. Um, yeah. It remind that that move of, of physically the character running up the arms um, reminded me of that as well. Right before the blast goes off, the thirty minute time limit is hit, and he's shrunken back down. And I'm like, "Oh no, what's gonna happen? He's gonna be a hit in the face with this massive ass coming on my hostel, right?" Turns out that yes, he can only use a power for up to thirty minutes at a time. However. It's not just one power that he has access to at any given time. He can store up to three powers in his little storage facility there. So he's got the first monster that we initially saw him take out the, with the long uh, quill hair that I said kind of looked like a, like a Super Saiyan 3 Sonic the Hedgehog sort of, yeah. who has the teleporting ability. Uh, that's one. We've seen him absorb Piccolo stuff. That's two. We're, unbeknownst to us, what the third one is. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, it's fucking Moro's power. <laughs> and Moro's power, his whole spiel, is eating power. So he taps into this moral power, I think. It's it's kind of tough for me to discern. I only read it through the one, one and a half times. Um, I think he just absorbs the power. And then he has like this massive power barrier around him. And like nobody can really touch him. And I'm like, oh no, the earth's boned. Moro's here. Except it's not moral. It's the seven three dude with the power of moral. Yeah. Um. And for a moment there, you're like, this is uh, this is escalating super quickly. Like, we thought we had more time until moral got here, but boom, here it is. And things get very serious very quickly. One of the other minor gang members, uh, Shimaraka, I want to say the name is. Uh, Shimaraka, meanwhile, radios back to Moro on like the headquarters ship, and he's like. Man, this Earth place is fucking crazy. They got a lot of crazy, powerful warriors down here. Uh, just saying, if you wanted to come check it out, wouldn't be a waste of your time, probably. And he's like, all right, cool. Uh, that's the case. Get the fuck out of there, please. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, you don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll go there soon. Leave. Please leave now. So 
Moro tells his guys then get the fuck out of there. And I think they said that they will be there now within 10 days. So it's bought the earth a little bit of time for now. Um, meanwhile, we flash over to Goku and Mira's training in the room of Spirit and Time. This weird undisclosed room of Spirit and Time. And basically they have the conversation of... Uh, continuing to try to achieve Ultra Instinct and what that training is going to be like. And Goku makes the comment that he notices that Maris hasn't eaten anything since they've gotten in there. And mm-hmm. Maris kind of responds with, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really have to eat. I could take it or leave it. Like, I don't need to do that. Um, and Goku, for whatever weird reason, for the first time in his life, is like, yeah, the food here kind of sucks anyway, so I'm going to not eat too. That's, I don't feel like that's going to last very long. No. I feel He's like trying to be more godly, maybe. I feel like it can't last very long. Um, either way, we know that that is a trait that the angels have expressed in the past. Like they, we see somebody who still loves delicious food, but he certainly does not need it to live because he is uh, mm-hmm. beyond that. You know. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about this is obviously uh, Maris has been somebody who has been uh, rumored. You know, maybe he's got some connections to the angels. Maybe he is the son of Whis. I heard that one. I've heard maybe he is a fallen angel, like somebody who was once an angel, but has since been um, disbarred from that because he decided to go be a space cop. Um, I've heard that maybe he was one of the fallen angels from one of the previously erased universes, uh, universes 13 through 18. I think of the three that I just outlined, I think it's likely the last one is probably most likely. Um, in the last page of this manga chapter today, we see that Whis is observing Maris and Goku in this room of spirit and time. So we know that he has the ability to look in there, which is, I guess, par for the course for the fucking you know, angel attendant of Universe 7, right? But we see that he can see in there and see what's going on with Goku and Miris training together. So he looks kind of, um, I don't know if he looks pissed off. But he doesn't look like typical carefree, happy ish Weiss. Yeah. You know, he yeah. looks kind of concerned. Um, next page, we see him before the Grand Priest, and he's apologizing. He's like, Sorry for the sudden request to see you. And the Grand Priest is like, Yeah, man, Universe 7, wild place. You always got some shit popping off. Weiss is like, Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk with you about something. And Grand Priest looks at him and goes, Oh, the matter of Miris, I suppose. And Weiss is like, oh, so then you already know. You are aware then, I believe is what he says. So everyone knows uh, something about Maris. These two on this angel order are aware of Maris's presence in Universe 7. And uh, they know that something's off about it. He probably shouldn't be there. He probably shouldn't be able to do the things that he's been able to do. Obviously, uh, the Grand Priest and Weiss know that there's something um not right about his presence there within the universe. And they know something that we don't, and hopefully we'll get to know what that is in the next chapter. Yeah. But if we had to theorize here, I'm kind of surprised. They know that motherfucker. When they started to hint that, you know, A, that he knew about Ultra Instinct and he could help Goku access it, obviously the next law, and, and just his appearance in general. Uh, obviously the idea of uh, him having some ties to the angels and maybe being an angel himself, that wasn't, it didn't take very long for that to follow. I said at the time that I would be super impressed or, or super hard pressed is probably the better way to say it. I'd be super hard pressed to see them ever write that in because that's just a little bit too, um, I don't know, above what Dragon Ball typically aims to do into roping in this little weird conspiracy theory about a fallen angel and all that shit. Like that some, sounds like some very fan ficky kind of shit. But, but they, um, They've laid the groundwork for it, and it looks like they're going to explore it. Also, bear in mind, Toyotaro, how did he get the job doing what he's doing? Once upon a time, he was Toy Bull and made Dragon Ball AF the fanfic of fanfics. Yeah. So maybe it's introducing more elements of you know a fan getting his own little imprints on the story. Maybe this is one of them that he was able to pitch to Toriyama and got him to adapt. Who the fuck knows? Um, my point is, if they do go and explore this, this angel Maris fallen angel territory. I think again, he's probably one of those quote unquote inactive angels from universe 13 through 18. And he's not supposed to be in seven doing what he's doing. And he's managed to fly under the radar from Weiss. And I imagine the grand priest was aware of it, but maybe just didn't give a fuck enough to do anything about it. I think he's one of those inactive angels. He should not be where he is doing what he's doing, but he's got powers to do it. And he's being a galactic cop about it. 
So, um, either way, I'm interested to see how they resolve this. Uh, I didn't think that this would be a, an idea that Toriyama would fucking explore. Maybe it's influence of Toritaro is my point. Um, space police are pretty wild. Yeah, but the space police are from a fucking uh, baby fart McGee's uh, Neko Majin. Uh, it was a it was a thing that Toriyama did in the early aughts, which was a like kind of a spinoff of Dragon Ball Z. Um, and I've never read it. I don't know much about it outside of that's kind of where the Galactic Patrol originates from. Yeah. Jocko and uh, Bulma's sister Tights. Like, really? Yeah, it's like a not super well known piece of the Dragon Ball Z story that isn't really a piece of the Dragon Ball Z story, but connects very loosely. And since Dragon Ball Z has come back in 13 with Battle of Gods and 15 with Gods No F, they've taken pieces of Neko Majin, including mainly Jocko, but also Tights is referenced. Um, and they also reference Yosun Goku and his friends special from 2008 with uh, fucking Tarble. My point is all those weird early aughts things that are kind of stupid and silly that most Dragon Ball fans don't particularly care for. They're all canon now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll get some resolution on what the hell's going on with Miris. I'm, I'm going with that whole supposed to be an active angel who's pretended to be somebody else maybe or slipped into the universe he shouldn't be in. Um, powers of an angel, I don't think... Uh, I, I don't think... I think if he has the powers of an angel, that's not above his capabilities to go hide out in another universe if he wants to. And yeah. if the grand priest chooses to let him do it because it's one of his kids, you know? Oh, look at my rogue kid <laughs> escaping from destroyed universe 13, going on to live a life in secrecy as a galactic cop. That's funny. <laughs> I wonder if anyone yeah, will catch right. him. <laughs> that's like his That's like his equivalent of some entertainment on a television show. Yeah, right. Huh. How's that rogue kid of mine doing from his, uh, from his erase? How's that erased child of mine doing with his stupid haircut? That would explain his stupid haircut. Yeah. Of all the haircuts you could have adopted, like I hope we got a flashback of Miris as an angel, like from you know whatever universe angel uh, from universe thirteen say, and he's got like a crazy different haircut, and you're like, oh my god, Miris! <laughs> all you gotta do is you, cut your hair to change. Universes. You changed up your identity when you came to universe seven, and <laughs> that's the fucking haircut you went with. What the hell, man? Uh, so we will see what happens with uh, with Miris. One thing I thought it was pretty noteworthy: we did not get any Vegeta in this yeah, chapter today. Right. Um, patience is a virtue on Planet Yardra, I suppose, and we have to develop some patience and just realize that we did not get a single motherfucking panel of Vegeta this month, and I'm upset about it. How do you feel? Vegeta's my favorite, dude. I think he's everybody's favorite, for real, except Goku fanboys, of which I am. Yeah, I everyone's love Goku too, but Vegeta's just better. That's just it. I shouldn't say that everyone's my favorite. I just really love Goku, and I really love Vegeta. Yeah. You know who I really don't love? Gohan. Really? Yeah. He's the strongest one out of all of them. Who cares? That's not a reason to like somebody. It's not a personality. Being the he strongest just doesn't a... harness his potential. Being the strongest isn't a personality. All right, I just want to fucking get that on the record here. I want you guys to think long and hard about that. <laughs> yes, I just said long and hard, and I realize that it's funny, and I could totally laugh at it right now. But I really do want I you to think about did. it. <laughs> you being the being the strongest unfused character in the Dragon Ball Z does not constitute a personality. Gohan's he, personality in Dragon Ball Z could be the strongest. Dragon Ball Z Gohan at the end after he gets the power up from Elder Kai, he's like the biggest asshole in the world. He's such a cocky douchebag. He could have ended that whole thing. But you know what happened? He turned into fucking douchebag Vegeta. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Either way. That's what happens when you're right. a big head. It's true. Broly you're had like, a huge oh, head. Shit, I'm Broly fucking... had a huge head. Doesn't mean he had a personality. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> New Broly has a nice personality. I do miss the pants, though. <laughs> Wait, who's better, Vegeta or Gogeta? Are you asking me? I mean, do you want reasons? Gogeta. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yeah. Dude, there was some kid. I, I'm sorry I'm forgetting your name in the moment, sir, but uh, one of the kids we interviewed... He hit me up on Twitter. He's like, hey, man, you guys are really cool to talk to. Um, thanks for doing that. But next time you do that, bring you have to bring harder trivia than that. Oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah. dude, we that, those were not trivia questions. Those yeah. are all very evidently yeah. opinion. We asked you who your favorite character was. How does that even constitute remotely as a yeah. trivia question? 
Uh, all right, so we miss Vegeta. Maris is a fallen angel, probably from maybe a previously erased universe. Goku's not going to eat food anymore. <laughs> Gohan had a fucking good fight today, but ultimately was about to get his ass whooped because Seven Three had moral power and could have yeah. destroyed the Earth right then and there. Except, Moral wants that shit for himself. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, short one today because it was a very action heavy chapter, and we also did put out an episode like a couple of days ago about My Hero Academia. You can go listen to that. Um, Fuck yeah. If you don't watch My Hero Academia, you fucking should. We've I'm made... almost through season one. Cool. You should Not be well into season close, two by so. now. Uh, we'll fucking turn... Well, no, you're watching it with Sam, so we won't turn it on. But, um, yeah, if you don't watch My Hero Academia, you should consider it. We've made a lot of people from our Dragon Ball Z audience check it out, and they've gotten hooked, and they've watched all of it, and they listen to all the Plus Ultras that we do. Um, so, yeah, do that. If you listen to this on Apple Podcasts, uh, your ratings and reviews are worth their weight in gold. So please uh, leave us a rating and review um, anywhere else. You know, follow, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Um, Spotify is good, too. Spotify is my new friend this week from Mr. Spotify Libsyn. Uh, Sam's a stats. Spotify subscriber. So so am I. Um yeah, Spotify stats just got uh, integrated into Libsyn this week, and that's kind of a, a nice big bump for us because our most hardcores of hardcores are all on Spotify. So it's nice to have them actually count to our uh, other already, you know, okay stats. Um, Instagram at DB Super Dope, Twitter at DB Super Dope One. Call us up, leave us a voicemail 401 and uh, yeah, that's it. I don't think we got any voice balance to play this week because y'all motherfuckers are whack and can't read the manga chapter within 30 seconds of it coming out like I do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I forget how this show ends because I just want to end it with My Hero Academia because we've done a lot more of those lately. Um, how does it end? Come on, dude. In the Dragon Ball? What? End of Dragon Ball, what? Super dope.